There are indications in Washington that Congress could be moving forward on a new coronavirus relief package. On Tuesday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer came forward to voice support for a bipartisan relief plan. The $908 billion proposal is less than half the amount Speaker Pelosi had requested over the last several months. But as coronavirus pandemic worsens, congressional Democrats hope the plan could lay a framework for future negotiations. However, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has already rejected the proposal, standing firm in his position that a $500 billion stimulus plan should be sufficient. Today, he hinted at some room for movement. Compromise is within reach. We know where we agree. We can do this. Let me say it again. We can do this. Lawmakers in Washington are scrambling to come to terms on a deal ahead of the year's end. More than 20 million Americans are currently enrolled in some form of unemployment program, while an estimated 12 million people are expected to exhaust their unemployment benefits just one day after Christmas. Additionally, the eviction protection and the freeze on student loan payments are set to end on December 31st. CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes joins me now. Hi, Nancy. Great to see you. So for months, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi stood firm in her demands for a $2 trillion relief package. This bipartisan proposal cuts her expectations in half. So how big of a concession is this for Pelosi and what isn't in the deal from her original proposal? Well, it's a major concession, Tanya, especially when you consider that uh, the, she's cutting in half what was her, um, you know, her, already a concession for her. She started at $3.4 trillion. Now she's down to about $900 billion. And it is a recognition of the political reality here, which is that uh, her party con currently does not control the Senate, doesn't control the White House, and that uh, she is not going to be able to force the Senate's leader, Mitch McConnell, to put her preferred legislation on the Senate floor. So she needs to give um, and potentially come back for more money once Vice President, uh, once President elect Biden rather, takes office. Um, it, it's still not clear right now, though, whether even that concession is going to be enough. Because as much as you heard Leader McConnell say there that, uh, you know, a compromise is within view and, and everyone understands uh, what, what could be achieved here, he he has not been willing to move off of his original position, which is still about half the size of, of the package that Nancy Pelosi wants. Uh, this compromise bill that she now supports or says she wants to use as a framework, it doesn't include another round of stimulus checks, which is something that she had wanted. It, it includes far less money for state and local governments than she had wanted to spend to help uh, all of these local governments that have really been stretched and hit hard by COVID uh, to pay teachers and uh, firefighters and, and, and emergency workers and all the rest. So uh, it is a lot different than what she started out with. But still, there is a, a recognition by, you know, frankly, a growing number of Democrats and Republicans that it might be the best they could do right now. As you mentioned, Nancy, the proposal doesn't include that second round of stimulus checks. With roughly 12 million Americans expected to exhaust their unemployment benefits by the end of the year, is there any potential we could see those stimulus checks added to this proposal? I mean, it seems probably not. Uh, it doesn't right. seem like they will be, especially since, uh, like you said, Nancy is not in charge here. Um, but is there a chance that they could come back around to this, you know, in January with the new administration? Uh, it's possible that President-elect Biden will try to do that. He'll run into the same challenge that Pelosi is having now, which is that Republican leaders want to spend less, not more. They argue, and I've just been talking to them today, look, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. There's a vaccine coming, and while the economy isn't doing great, it's okay. And they think that uh, things will only improve as the vaccine is disseminated. Democrats and some Republicans argue uh, that may be true, but people really need a bridge right now. Uh, there are people who have been unemployed for months. They're being threatened with eviction. They're falling far behind on their rent. And they think that those individuals need more of a bridge until the economy really does 
start to bounce back. So I think it's, it's very unlikely that those stimulus checks would end up in this particular piece of legislation. They cost hundreds of billions of dollars, and uh, Mitch McConnell has pretty firmly rejected that. But it's certainly possible that President-elect Biden could try to push for that once he takes office. And, you know, Nancy, both sides of the aisle do agree that Congress will most likely need to sit down for another round of stimulus negotiations after President-elect Biden takes office. How is the transition and, and what's going on apart from, you know, negotiations over the stimulus plan, but all the background noise of, over the transition, how is that impacting the way both parties are likely to approach any sort of deal? You know, I think what's having an even bigger impact than the transition is the prospect of these two runoffs in Georgia that are taking place next month. Because until those runoffs happen, we really don't know which party is going to control the Senate. And without knowing that, the two parties really don't know who's got the most leverage in this deal and whether it makes sense to try to cut a deal now or whether their hand will be much stronger come January. So that is really uh, what has kind of uh, scrambled the power dynamics on Capitol Hill right now. We haven't heard much from the transition team about what kind of stimulus plan President-elect Biden would like to try to put in place in January or February, and that's by design, because they know that if they lay that out now and say, hey, we want $500 billion for this and $250 billion for that, then that just makes it all much less likely that there would be some kind of compromise bill now, because, you know, Republicans could easily say, well, we could just put that on, on President-elect Biden's plate when he comes in in January. We don't want to spend that much money. I guess everyone is waiting to see what happens in Georgia. All right. Well, Nancy Cordes, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Tanya.